In 1881, Edgeworth came up with a way of representing, using the same axis, indifference curves and the corresponding contract curve. Let's use a couple of diagrams in order to better understand how to build an Edgeworth box. These two diagrams represent the consumption patterns of two individuals, A on the left and B on the right. The x-axis or horizontal axis shows the amount of good x consumed, while the y-axis or vertical axis shows the amount of good y consumed. We'll draw indifference curves corresponding to the amounts of good x and y consumed by A and the amounts of goods consumed by B. This indifference curve joins points that give the same utility level to consumer A, derived from the consumption of goods Y and X. The level of utility increases more the more upwards the indifference curve is set. We also draw the indifference curves for consumer B, which derive from the consumption of the same goods X and Y. When the indifference map of consumer B is rotated and put on top of the indifference map of consumer A, the Edgeworth box is formed. Indeed, it's not only easier to analyze, but also makes more sense, since the total available quantities of goods are given. When indifference curves are tangent to each other, their marginal rate of substitution at the tangency point are equal to each other. By connecting all points of tangency between the indifference curves of both individuals, the contract curve is constructed and represents all Pareto efficient allocations. This means all allocations outside the contract curve can be improved. For instance, take I. The first thing we notice is that at this point, the marginal rates of substitution, which for each indifference curve are equal to their slope, are not equal to each other. Indeed, point I corresponds to the third indifference curve for consumer A and the first indifference curve for consumer B. However, consumer B would like to change to point G, since it would increase his utility, going from his first to his second indifference curve. Consumer A would not argue the change since his utility level is the same. This is what we call a Pareto improvement, since Pareto efficiency is reached. Notice that at point G, the marginal rates of substitution are equal to each other. The Edgeworth box is widely used in welfare economics, game theory, or general equilibrium theory, to name a few. It's worth mentioning that from the Edgeworth box, we can easily derive the utility possibility frontier and the production possibility frontier.